What is going on crypto friends? Welcome to the channel. My name is Farid and in today's video I want to break down a recent announcement that was just made by the Iagon team. Now if it's your first time hearing about Iagon, they're going to be a decentralized storage provider building on Cardano. In addition to that, their protocol will be built specifically for Web3, aiming to make it easier for everyone to contribute to their decentralized cloud storage network and earn from it. On top of that, some of the key features they plan on bringing to Cardano include a decentralized network to ensure that users are in full control of their own data, as well as high security through file encryption, encoding, and sharding techniques. Now that we have the introduction out of the way, I want to quickly break down this recent article that was just released by the team, mentioning the fact that they're now aiming to be a full Cardano native project moving forward, removing all of the work that they've done on their ERC platforms. And so as you guys may or may not be aware, there was a cyber attack against the Nomad Bridge, which essentially affected all the assets on that bridge. Since then, that bridge is no longer functional, and that occurred back in August 1st of 2020. Now, this article here is going to essentially break down what happened as a part of that attack and then exactly what the team is doing moving forward. So as most of you already know, a cyber attack brought the Nomad Bridge project to a halt again on August 1st of 2022. With around 300 wallet addresses involved, the damage amounted to over $190 million US in general. Now keep in mind, this is not 190 million US dollars specifically from the Iagon protocol, but just overall as a part of the entire attack. Although 75% or over 75% of the ERC Iagon tokens were recovered from the attack, they are still investigating numerous suspicious transactions in cooperation with other organizations and relevant services. So it does look like the um, security portion of this attack, or at least the review of the security of the attack is still ongoing and they are still trying to recover as much funds for the community as possible. However, they've already recovered more than 75%, which I personally think is a lot more than we normally see under these types of circumstances. Now, what does the actual team have in mind as a result of this particular attack? Well, it says here, Iagon is still planning to be a 100% Cardano native project. The Nomad Bridge exploit made them realize, right, that they need to move away from the ERC-20 tokens, which are on Ethereum, as quickly as possible. Now, this project will utilize Cardano native tokens, or CNTs for short, only moving forward, which is quite a big announcement for a team to be making, um, especially right now when there's a big narrative for a lot of projects to go multi-chain or cross-chain. Now, it's worth noting that no Cardano tokens or no Cardano native tokens were lost in the bridge hack. Only the ERC-20 counterparts were affected. Having said that, Cardano is a rapidly growing ecosystem and its constant development translates to enhanced security safety measures. And so it does look like they are understanding the fact that um, Cardano does appear to be a little bit safer than the Ethereum environment where we are seeing a lot of these exploits or hacks occurring. Now that said, it's not to say that there will never be a hack or an exploit on Cardano. It's just that at this time they are building with security in mind and they have yet to actually have a direct hack on the, on the network. Now, what about the actual ERC-20 tokens, right? So the Igon team is ready to essentially release a special Cardano native token claim procedure area for people in possession of their ERC-20 tokens. So if you guys currently own the Ethereum version of the Igon tokens, you will have a portal which you can access, which I'm going to show you guys here in just a second. And basically all you have to do is connect your wallet and it'll show you exactly how much of the Ethereum or ERC-20 version of the tokens that you currently hold. And then it'll allow you to essentially um, burn those right in exchange for the Cardano native token version. So if you guys head over to claim.iagon.com, which I have open here in this next tab, you can essentially come over here, connect your wallet. And depending on how much of the Iagon ERC-20 version tokens you have within your Ethereum wallet, they will be displayed here. And you'll then be able to essentially claim the equivalent amount as a part of the Cardano native token version. Now, jumping back over here, it says to make this work, we will have to rely on snapshots taken just before the Nomad Bridge, Nomad Bridge hack, which occurred at 9.32 p.m. UTC on the 1st of August of 2022. So it also says it's an easy process, right, which should be straightforward. And all that will be required are a few clicks here and there and nothing that is too complicated. So, again, as I mentioned, it does seem like it's a pretty straightforward process. Um, and again, if you guys have any issues, feel free to either jump into their Discord or their Telegram, where they are relatively active when it comes to helping out users running into issues. Now, it says here. 
Please take into account that it may take more or at least 14 business days to verify the wallet that you guys are using to claim and to actually complete the transaction. So it's not going to be a straightforward process. It's not going to be something that happens immediately. Um, you have to give it up to at least 14 business days for this to actually occur. Now, scrolling down here, I'm not going to be able to read the entire article, but I do want to just kind of talk about some of the existing concerns when it comes to the gate.io platform, which we are still seeing some halting trades or the inability to actually process trades when it comes to the ERC version of the Iagon tokens. So it says right now, you should now be able to trade on BitTrue, right? Um, and so there's no issues there if you guys hold the um, Cardano native version of the tokens there. However, as for gate.io, we are still looking out for details with the team. And so unfortunately, this takes time as it is often the case when legal problems need to be resolved. We will notify you, the community, about the outcome as soon as possible. In addition to that, bear in mind that you will not be able to use the ERC-20 version of the Iagon tokens anymore. So that's the biggest takeaway from today's video is that the Iagon team is going to be fully built on Cardano with the Cardano native token as their base token, right? And they're essentially going to be getting rid of the ERC-20 version or the version of the token that was previously held on Ethereum. Now, what about the members who are undergoing the update from the V1 to the V2 tokens, right? So it says here, if you have pending tokens through the first swap from Iagon V1 to V2, you can use the Cardano native token claim website just to get the rest. So if you're also in that position, you can also use the same exact claim website to essentially go ahead and swap out and get, and get the Cardano native version of the Iagon token. In terms of lesson learned, it is worth mentioning right, that the team is operating fully on Cardano now, and they're more than motivated to work twice as hard to get Cardano native status as soon as possible. Again, this is going to mean improved security measures and hopefully some peace of mind for the community. Having said that, that is going to wrap it up for today's video. Again, just kind of bringing you guys some brief updates when it comes to the Iagon protocol and exactly what they plan on doing in terms of moving to Cardano. And then if you guys have any questions about the clean process, again, make sure to head over into the Discord or their Telegram. If you guys appreciated this video, then please make sure to tap that like button. If it's your first time stopping by, consider subscribing. And if you guys have any questions, then make sure to leave those down in the comment section below. I will see you guys in the next video.